Good morning, family. So <laughs> now that we got this uh, in the shop, I'm going to clean it up, get all the caked on concrete off of it, and I'm going to fab up a uh, wagon style uh, platform. The the I've owned one of these before, and it had kind of like a wheelbarrow, two wheels in the front, but it had the, the handles like a, like a wheelbarrow, and you would have to uh, pick it up to move it. And I don't think that I want to do that. I'm getting older and weaker, <laughs> so I need to be smarter, uh, hopefully. So what I want to do is I want to kind of design a uh, kind of like a, a radio flyer where I can steer it with a handle and pull it uh, on four wheels rather than picking it up uh, wheelbarrow style. So anyways, that's, uh, that's what we're gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do and uh, take you along for the ride. So let's get started. So I went to fire it up and uh, no go and I was kind of getting worried and upon further inspection one of the wires um, is a little worn out and broken um, so I'm going to rewire it and then fire it up. So let's get started with that. This is a, almost a complete redo. But I've seen it run, so it does run. So here we go. You can see where the uh, the wire is broken off right here. All right, you can. See, I think you can see that. Nope, wrong way. Right there. See how that. So the wire's broken out. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna cut the wires coming in so I know where they go, right? And I know that uh, white and black should be uh, pretty simple. And all they used is Romex, right? So I'm going to give it a, a proper cord. I'm all ready. Whenever you are. Okay. Um, so that was uh, the wifey we're going to go over to uh, HFT but uh, before I go and then resume in, in a little while I'm not an electrician so this is not a uh, how to this is just how I, right? This is not a how to, this is how I. Although I'm not an electrician, I've seen a lot of people on YouTube try to expose wire. And what they do is, uh, let's say they, they need this much exposed wire. And what they do is they'll, they'll come over here and they'll cut the jacket all the way down. Now, I was taught by an electrician um, to cut down a few inches, right? And if you need to, on both sides, and then peel 
it back. Uh, again, I'm not an electrician, so I'm not going to say which one's better as far as electrician, but logic tells me that if I cut the jacket along the length of it, there's a high risk of damaging the insulation on the individual wires inside. So logic tells me that if I damage the first inch or so of insulation on the individual wires, logic tells me that that part of the wire was going to be exposed anyways so that I can splice them together with where they're going to go, whether it be in a uh, electrical box or uh, a switch or receptacle or anything like that, right? So when you when you grab the outer jacket, Now, the only possible damage is up here. Down here, I can be confident that I have not cut that. Again, not electrician, but it just makes good sense. So now that the wire is inside, right, now that the wires are inside here, i am put a strain relief. That way, uh, not only is it tightened with the, uh, the clamp here, but I'm gonna put a strain relief on the inside and we'll do uh, a zip tie here. And that by itself is pretty good. So this one didn't have any uh, any ground wire, but there's the ground there's the ground screw right there, right above my finger. I don't know if you can see it. And we're going to connect this one to it. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't connect the ground, but we're going to connect the ground. And that's the first thing we're going to do. Um, another thing that I was always told is you uh, connect the ground first, then the white, which is neutral. And then you're, uh, you're hot, whether it's red or black. You know? So that's what we're going to do, and it's kind of tight quarters, so you're going to see it from long distance away. That was actually easier than I thought. All right, cool. Hopefully everything else goes that way. All right, so let's shove that one in there. Now let's go with our neutral. So hot, and then that's your neutral, and that's your ground. I'm gonna connect this, and then plug it in before I close up the box here. 
and uh, see if it'll run. If it'll run, I'll close up the box, and then uh, I'll actually install a switch. Uh, but first, we're going to plug it direct, see if it's going to work. A lot of these, a lot of the stuff I have from uh, from my house build out in uh, California, where we, my wife and my kids, we <coughs> built a an addition. To our home out there, the one we sold, and when we all lost our jobs, and uh, it was a depressing time in life because we all lost our jobs at the same time, and uh, man. It was, uh, it was as if everything was coming against us at the same time. And now looking back, I see that it was actually like a blessing in disguise because although none of us wanted to be unemployed and uh, you know, it's kind of devastating when, when the system that you work for kind of tells you that you're not, you're not valid anymore, you're not needed anymore. It's uh, pretty devastating. I think I cut these tails a little long. So anyways, we, we all went through some crazy times, some crazy thoughts, and uh, but we made it out on the other side, and I can see God's hand all over it. And I think that's the that's the th that's the thing that is probably one of the most difficult things in life is to recognize when when through tragedy God is blessing you. You know, that's, that's definitely the, been a challenge for me is to try to see the silver lining into everything. And uh, I'm not a silver lining type of guy. And a lot of the stuff that I share with people and I'm really just kind of sharing it for myself because it's it's difficult it's it's really difficult but now I see that uh, there's a blessing and that helps I need Going through it helps uh, to comfort other people in their walk and in their tragedies and catastrophes and, you know, whatever it is that they're going through. It's, uh, yeah. Although we also have to recognize that a lot of people don't want to <laughs> don't want to recognize that either. We're no different. We're no different. So all you do is so gold, the gold one is always to the hot, right? Silver to white, 
gold to black, green to green. Uh, if you don't have black, then it's uh, gold to red. And really the colors are just there to help identify, right? It doesn't matter if it's black or red. It's uh, the color is just an identifier. I normally leave about three eighths for these. You don't want to leave them. You want to make sure that only wire goes in and not insulation. You don't want it to pinch insulation because then you're not you're not getting good contact. Right? So right about there. Right about there, that's uh, pretty good. Right? All right, do the pull test, right? Everything looks good. And uh, we bring this back. <laughs> Sometimes, I remember when I first learned how to do this, I'd forget to put this part in, right? I was so uh, eager to learn how to connect one of these that I would forget this has to go first so that uh, you'll have it available to you when you need to close it up. Anyways, uh, I would be eager to to put the connectors that uh, I'd have to take the whole thing apart. And this only goes in one way. There we go. See how they all popped out? Now, now we're cooking with oil right there. Look at that. Look at that. That's a beautiful thing. Make sure those are good. All right, now what I like to do is I like to push this cord all the way in as far as it, as far as it'll let me push it in and hold that and tighten up these uh, I don't even know what they're called they're uh, strain preventers I guess and and It's so that uh, if somebody pulls on the cord to unplug, they don't come off the uh, poles. But you're supposed to unplug from here, right? Never unplug like that. But uh, you know that. All right, let's uh, plug her in, see if she works. And now we're going to mount the switch.
So, I have to interrupt power somehow. So what's going to happen is, this is going to go into the switch. Right, this is going to go into the switch. And the neutral is going to run through. And we're going to connect the hot. Hot here and hot here. So this is the hot coming in from the motor and this is the hot to the to the wall right to your power to your source and you turn it on and that connects the two hots and then you have power and you turn it off right? and the neutrals they get uh, tight together they don't they don't get switched you never want to switch you never want to switch the neutral you want to always switch the hot That ain't going nowhere. I always trim the last inch because that's where I ran my blade. Again, it's a safety precaution. I see that there's lots of uh, people doing um, installing switches on uh, on the YouTubes. They don't do that. Um, I just take that as a precaution. All right, so now before I uh, close this off, I'm gonna connect it to see if uh, this works. All right, testing. that so ideally I want a, a, a switch plate 
that's made out of metal, metallic, or even waterproof. And right now, I don't have one since I'm using stuff that I had here at home. So I'm going to use a regular old household switch plate for now. Um, just to protect anybody from, uh, from getting into the wires and as soon as I... Alright. Not bad. Not bad.